presentation the, this evening is by Asha Khan. Asha obtained his Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering degree and a postgraduate diploma in business management in India. He then spent 17 years in the marine industry, followed by 12 years with Vortzeller. He is now based out of Sydney and is currently responsible for Vortzeller's new build projects in Australia and the Pacific Islands. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll pass you over to Asha Khan. Thank you very much, Phil. Uh, good day, everybody. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Rina and MRS for giving me this opportunity to, to present Vortzella products and solutions from Marine Power. Uh, uh, today, I'm going to talk you through the, all the products and solutions what we have in our portfolio. And I'll ensure that you know I'll make this session meaningful, add value to your knowledge, and at the same time make it interesting. So without any further ado, I'll just straight away jump into the uh, the topics today we are going to to discuss to present. So uh, just. A, a, a small apology, you know, because we may well experience some lag from shifting from one slide to another slide. Obviously, you know, today this one technology, you know, internet, which is overloaded like anything. So please bear with us. So, so today we are going to cover following topics. One is introduction to Watsila. Uh, and then market segments, product overview engines and genset range, propulsion range, and then the hot topic in present times, which is decarbonization and future fuels and related solutions to decarbonization, the, the, the pathway to decarbonization, what solution and concept we have developed in-house. So mainly hybrid batteries, diesel, dual fuel, electric, and, and, and much more. So a little bit about Watsila before we jump into the, the details of this presentation. The company was founded in 1834. Uh, Watsila is a global leader in innovative technologies and life cycle solutions, uh, mainly for marine and energy markets. So our, we endeavor to develop innovative solutions uh, we, which are sustainable. And we also uh, endeavor to su support our customers uh, for, the life cycle, for the life cycle support of their asset. Globally, we have a team of 17,500 employees which are professionals in their own field. Hi. We are present. Yep. Hello. So we are, we are present in 200 locations in more than 70 countries. In 2021, recently our result was declared. Uh, we totaled, uh, our, our net sales totaled around 4.8 billion euros. We are also listed on NASDAQ in, and Helsinki. On the right-hand side, uh, you, you see a global map and you will see orange, blue and white dots. The orange dots represent the service network, blue production facilities, and the white ones are production facilities with joint ventures, which are mainly in China. Our main businesses are marine and energy. So our offerings, what do we offer to our customers? New build solutions, which include engines, propulsion systems, hybrid technology, and integrated power, powertrain systems. To support these, we have a battery of people, as you have seen in the earlier slide, uh, an unrivaled global network of maritime professionals supporting all our customers globally. We have performance-based agreements, planned and unplanned maintenance services and 
not limited to upgrading and optimizing installations. So the slide what you see now, these on, on, the, on the left hand side, you see engine and propulsion. This is the basic core standalone product what we have. If we add the catalyst, NOx reduction, fuel gas supply system, and the EPMS, then it equals to the part towards decarbonization. It gives you fuel flexibility. It gives you a, a hybrid concept added into your, uh, into your system, which directly impacts on, on, on the emissions, which leads to the IMO target compli <coughs> compliance. Then the market segments we serve. We serve passenger, offshore, merchant, special purpose. Well, whichever vessel is not mentioned in this, you can also consider that when we talk about marine, we are, we are into entire, entire business per se. To start with, uh, we start with engines and gensets. So Watsila uh, is continuously developing its portfolio of gas and multi-fuel engines to suit, to suit different marine applications. Now we have, besides medium speed engines, now we also have high speed engine, which was developed in 2018. It was launched in 2018. And this is the end product uh, and the, the, the outcome of the collaboration between Watsila and Lieber, Switzerland. I think Lieber must have uh, rung the bell uh, uh, to, uh, to your mind. Uh, it's a Swiss company into earth moving cranes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a very popular company. So we have developed this high speed engine. High speed engine with labor. Sorry, there's a lag again. Yeah. So, Watsila 14 is a high speed. It's lighter, smarter, greener, and it is um, uh, it is produced for both main propulsion and genset application. It comes in two configurations: 12V and 16V. 12V has the engine displacement of 27 liters and 16V has engine displacement of 36 liters respectively. Giving mechanical output of 749 kilowatts and can go up to 1.3 megawatts. And on the genset side, the electrical output of 675 kilowatt uh, can go up to 1.1 megawatt. Ranges from 1500 to 1900 RPM it comes in all five ratings. So this is on the right hand side. If you see the top top picture, this is Watsila 14. Then we come to our our expertise, uh, the main portfolio medium speed engines uh, for my main propulsion and genset application, which are available in diesel, dual fuel, and pure gas. Now propulsion engine. Uh, for diesel uh, propulsion engine, our output starts from 800 kilowatts, go, can go up to 19.4 megawatts. Dual fuel propulsion engines, output of 1.1 megawatts can go up to 18 megawatts. The RPM ranges from 600 to 1200 RPM. The gensets, we produce both 50 Hertz and 60 Hertz cycle. So the diesel genset electrical output starts from 700 kilowatt, which goes up to 9.3 megawatts. RPM, 1200 to 750 RPM. Dual fuel, electrical output, starting from 920 kilowatts, 9.2 megawatts. Again, the RPM, 1200 to 750 RPM. Then we also have pure gas, pure gas engine for genset application, for marine application. And the electrical output is 4.2 megawatts, which goes up to 8.4 megawatts, 720, 750 RPM. That said, we only have one engine for in pure gas application for genset application, which is W31. You see on the right hand side, 
this is the angel. Now, interesting facts about this W31 engine. This is one of the latest development. This was developed in 2015. And this engine is best in class when it comes to power to weight ratio, fuel efficiency. And uh, in 2015, this engine has also won Guinea's book of records and it has an accolade uh, attached with it for being the most efficient engine. Our DF engines, uh, when running on gas mode, they all are tier three compliant. Our diesel engines are tier three compliant if they are with selective catalytic reduction. Now, this slide, gives you information about Wartzilla fuel gas system. This is again in-house uh, uh, development by Wartzilla. Wartzilla LNG pack, we call it Wartzilla LNG pack system. It is based on IMOC uh, type, IMOC type LNG storage tank, which comes in two options, double walled and single walled. Now on the left-hand side, double wall, you, you will see the construction. Both inner and outer shell, they are made of SS and the space between it is vacuum or perlite acting as insul insulation. On the right hand side, you will see single wall, uh, single wall tank, which is made of polyurethane, we call it PUR. Now the inner part is obviously 9% 9% 9, 9 nickel steel or stainless steel, but the outer section is polyurethane. The insulation is, is polyurethane foam uh, and it also has a weather protection. And then the tank connection space, this section, what you see, this is again in line. Now this inline tank connection space is developed by us and it is patented by Watsila. So that's only our design when it comes to single wall. Now, some, some, some data here uh, for double wall tank and single wall tank. Uh, the LNG volume for double wall tank starts from 25 to 500 CBM. For single wall, it goes to from 300 to 5,000 CBM. Diameter max, 6.5 meters for double wall, 10 meters max for single wall. Design pressure, four to, four to nine bar, four to seven bar for single wall. Insulation, as I mentioned, for double wall, insulation is by the virtue of vacuum. And the single wall has polyurethane foam insulation. Tank type, double wall comes in single lobe only. However, single wall tank comes in single, bilobe, and multi-lobe. It can be placed horizontally, vertically, top or below deck. Secondary barrier is not required. The bunkering capacity with the N5200 ball is 40 to 1000 CBM per hour. Then moving on to propulsion and gears. Watsila propulsion system has various segments inside propulsion department. One, we have energy saving technology. Two, propellers thrusters and control systems, water jets, propulsion control systems, and gaze and transmission. Taking a deep dive into the propulsion system, we start with controllable pitch propellers, which is called as WCP. This is the acronym. So this is mainly recommended for the vessels with frequent sailing routes that involve multiple operating conditions. It's an ideal choice for diesel mechanical propulsion, both with medium speed and low speed engines. WCP comprises of hub, propeller blades, shafting, hydraulics, control system, and any further accessories required as mentioned here in the options. These are add-ons. Now, talking about the range, the range for CPP, WCP starts from 50, 500 kilowatts and there is no upper limit. It comes as four bladed or five, or five bladed, both in bronze and stainless steel propellers. 
various hub types depending on the application and compliant with all IS class. One interesting fact. Now, I don't want to go into deep, I mean, in, into details of the, uh, the, the sub types of CPP, but we have developed one type of CPP, which is called as G hub, G letter hub, which gives uh, the owner uh, the, the facility to actually exchange the hub without even pulling the shaft. So you don't have to pull the shaft just to change the hub, remove the hub. You can do it in situ without opening anything. So that's a, a big plus. So you can exchange straight away the hub with, uh, with a new one, reconditioned or new one without pulling the shaft. That's, that's a, a very great feature. Then we come to fixed pitch propellers. Uh, they, they range from anywhere between one to 12 meters and up to 95 tons of weight can be produced. Watsila has also developed another type of FPP, which is called as built up propellers. Now, if you see the pictures, on the left hand side, it is fixed pitch built up propeller. And the, the figure is self explanatory. The, the picture, what you see, you, you see the bolt, the blades are bolted on the shaft. So, what it does is you don't have to change the entire, you know, uh, 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 shaft or, you know, entire thing. If something happens to one blade, you can just remove and replace one blade straight away. It also gives uh, uh, the ease to demount and mount underwater. So you don't have to take the vessel out to the dry dock. So, so these features make them unique and uh, there are no propeller diameter or weight limits for this. And they also come in four and five bladed propellers. Moving on to again, interesting uh, propulsion offering, which is Watsila thrusters, uh, steerable and transverse thrusters. We have, we have a different series covering a wide range of customer needs and application. Now to start with, we have steerable thrusters, which start from 900 to 3,300 3, kilowatts. Uh, this is mainly for tug and offshore and offshore wind farm support vessel applications. And uh, we call them WST, acronym for Watsila steerable thrusters. Then we have retractable thrusters, starting from one megawatts, goes up to 6.5 megawatts. This, this is, this, these are special type of thrusters, provide additional maneuvering and station keeping capabilities. It can be fully retracted in the hull for transit or shallow draft operation. We have one vessel here in, in West Coast, uh, it, this Venturer, which is owned by Infex, has this type of thruster. Uh, available at power ratings up to 6.5 megawatts, as mentioned. Uh, retractable thrusters up to 4.5 megawatts are also available in L and Z drive configuration. We know L and Z drive, L is directly driven by motor, Z is kind of an azimuthal. Uh, so all WST, Portsilla steerable thruster dash are retractable feature and eight degree tilted propeller gearbox. Now this tilted gearbox, this is, one is you have a tilted nozzle. Now this is a completely tilted package to minimize the, the thruster and hull and thruster-thruster interaction. So it gives you more thrust, more efficiency. LMT type are equipped with three degree tilted nozzle. As I said, there is also tilted nozzle for this. Then we have under mount, underwater mountable thrusters uh, ranging from 2.5, 2.4 to 6.5 megawatts. And uh, these are basically designated under mount, underwater uh, mountable thrusters. And uh, this, this also has an eight degree tilted propeller gearbox uh, to provide, provide superior and reliable DP operations. The underwater mountable thrusters from LMT series are available for lower end of the power range. 
Then last but not the least, we also have transfer thrusters for maneuvering from 600 kilowatts to 550 kilowatt, uh, uh, 550 to 600 kilowatt. C they come in both options, CP and controllable pitch and FP options uh, are, are available. So we have wide range of applications for this. We have FPSOs, we have uh, offshore construction vessels, we have special deep water uh, offshore vessels. Uh, we have uh, 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 offshore construction vessels. So yeah, and there are n number of installations in the market globally. Now, interesting part. Now this water jet may be it's very specific to Australian market because we are we 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 are specific to this particular market where we build high speed crafts with uh, uh, water jets. Now we have a uh, water jet starting from 500 kilowatts to 50 megawatts. That's from mid range to 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 large water jets. So on the left hand side, what you see is modular WXJ series which is a modular jet, uh, water jet, which is large in size. On the right-hand side, it's mid-size LJX series. So it is just WXJ and L LJX is just acronym to, to identify what kind of water jet it is. So in modular design, as can be seen, uh, we supply loose outboard parts, loose thrust bearings, Loose hydro, hydraulic power pack, loose machinery controls, loose PTO as well. Now, there are two options. You can have inboard hydraulics as well as hydro, uh, outboard hydraulics. The material is duplex and the, the inlet is excluded because the design is done by Watsila, but the fabrication, this part is done by the shipyard. Now, the size in as per our catalog, it's, it's size 450 to 2180. On the right hand side, these are plug and play water jets. These are mainly, you know, sizing up to maybe uh, 80 meters uh, craft, very popular. Uh, it, the package design, all components uh, come on, on the scale. Uh, it includes outboard parts, uh, it includes thrust bearing, it includes hydraulic power pack, all the controls included PTO. The, in, the, the hydraulics are always in board. Material inlet skid is aluminum. Uh, outboard parts, aluminum, stator, bow, in, uh, impeller and shaft, they are duplex. Including in, uh, inlet, as I said, it is plug and play. So entire skid comes as it is, as you can see from the pictures. The sizes are 510, 570, 640, 720, and 810. And upward, you have uh, modular jets. Very, very popular for in petrol vessels, high-speed uh, crafts, uh, also other naval applications, uh, big, big size ferries, uh, also are equipped, uh, equipped with this uh, water jets. And yeah, uh, also Watsila jets are very popular in the market. Then uh, when it comes to water jet solutions, we also offer you, uh, offer customers an integrated package, you know, which has engine, we have hybrid or battery system in place, we have fuel gas supply system, we have control unit, data control unit. It is a cloud-based services uh, where we get all the data from the vessel. And we also advise the customers what's going on with their engine and jets. Uh, we have Pro, Pro Touch propulsion control system, and then we have smart docking. Uh, and then we also support the entire package with our life cycle solutions. Then we also have uh, gay boxes and transmission in our portfolio. Uh, they have been designed to meet higher standard of operational efficiency, reliability, low noise and vibrations. We have a uh, single speed gay box for installations, uh, uh, 
uh, with single engine and propeller operating at constant propeller speed. So there is a vertical offset, uh, which is represented by SCV. If the model has SCV, it means it's a vertical offset. Another model is SCH in single speed that represent horizontal offset. Furthermore, we have two speed gearboxes for installations with single engine and propeller able to operate the two selectable at a two selectable propeller speed. So SCV, as you uh, understood SCV uh, vertical offset and two speed. Similarly, SCH horizontal offset two speed. Then we have double gearboxes where we have twin in single out. So there are two engines giving power to one gearbox, uh, two, two inputs uh, separately, and then we get a single out from the gearbox. Then we also manufacture special gearboxes uh, with both horizontal and vertical offsets, uh, which are obviously tailor-made. So all gears can be supplied with built-in multi-disc clutches for engaging the propeller. Now we come to a very interesting topic, uh, decarbonization and future fuels. Uh, goes without saying it's, it's a buzzword now, decarbonization and as an organization, we are doing, we are, we are at the forefront of developing new solutions uh, to achieve the, the ambitious targets set by IMO. So, okay, what is decarbonization and why we need to decarbonize shipping? So shipping, as we know, uh, this is this 2.6% of global emission is, it is from 2018. So it may have maybe been stable or may have touched to 3%. Somewhere I read it is 3% now. Uh, so shipping is also contributing to global emissions. CO2 is the largest of GHGs, low, uh, greenhouse gas, uh, while other important GHG are methane and nitrogen. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry.
ship and shipping portfolios. So this is already ongoing. And then we have Sea Cargo Charter, which is again is a is a global uh, framework for assessing and disclosing the climate alignment of chartering activities. That's also ongoing and it will continue. Third, we have EU Fit for 55. I think this also may be a familiar uh, term for everyone. Uh, Fit for 55 is basically a target set by European Union to basically uh, reduce the gas emission by at least 55% by 2030. And this was passed in July 21. Uh, this also seeks to produce 40% of the Europe's energy from wind, wave, and solar sources by 2030. So it's a very, again, ambitious target. Now, in short-term measures, we have EEDI, uh, uh, SEEMP. Then we have developed technical and operational energy efficiency measures for new and existing ship. Again, this is e EXI and CII. Very familiar words. We know EXI is basically uh, uh, energy efficiency of existing uh, energy efficiency, existing ship index. In principle, describes the CO2 emissions per cargo ton and mile. It determines the standardized CO2 emissions related to installed engine power transport capacity and ship speed. Whereas CII is a measure of how efficiently a ship transports good or passengers in a, in, in, and is given in grams of CO2 emitted per cargo carrying capacity and nautical mile. So these are, these are the buzzwords these days. And starting 1st of January, 2023, the ship owners, operators, managers have to comply to EXI. And then CII will be done on annual basis. And if you may have read the uh, MARPOL, uh, well, I think it is MEPC 76, uh, which was published in June 2021. Uh, now IMO has set four categ uh, five categories. Uh, the ships in five categories based on with respect to their energy efficiency, which is A, B, C, D, and E, where obviously A is the best. So administrations, port authorities, and other stakeholders as appropriate are encouraged to provide incentives to ships rated as A or B. Also sending out signals, strong signals to the market and financial sector, and also people who are not complying operators who are not complying to it. So a ship rated, a ship, sorry, this is a ship rated D for three consecutive years, or E is required to submit a corrective action plan to show how the required index uh, C or above would be achieved. Such category obviously will also expose these operators, owners to financial risk, charter risk, and regu regulatory risk. Moving on to another slide, uh, developments and in initiative by Watsila. Now, as I said, we are at the forefront of developing solutions, doing everything what is possible to come out with solutions which will support the customers to reduce the emissions in time to come. And at the same time, also achieve the ambitious target set by IMO. Now, Recently, we have launched groundbreaking two-stroke future fuel con conversion solution. And we have joined forces with, with, with Mediterranean Shipping Company for technology de demonstration in Q1 2022. So stay tuned, you will hear more about it. And then we have also Watsila and Simon Moxter uh, from Norway. We have joined forces to study feasibility of ammonia and LNG uh, dual fuel operations. Watsila and uh, Samsung, Samsung Heavy Industry, South Korea agreed to collaborate on ammonia fuel engines for future new builds. Uh, and then uh, Wat Watsila and its big offshore Norway, uh, we have cooperated in world's first ammonia conversion pro project, which is ongoing. 
Greg Edge and Watsila are also collaborating to develop a groundbreaking new tanker vessel, the MS Green Ammonia, the vessel which will both transport and run green ammonia is expected to be in operation as early as 2024. The development part, uh, development project is the part of the zero emission energy distribution at sea, ZEADS initiative. Then Wotsila and uh, Kunatsen Shipping Norway and Repsol with the support from Sustainable Energy Catapult Center will also commence the first long-term full-scale testing of ammonia as fuel in a marine four-stroke engine. We also got 20 million grant from Norwegian Research Council through the Demo 2000 program. Now, this what I'm actually reading out, these, this, this dates back in 2020. So this is already ongoing. Everything what you see now is already ongoing. Then uh, we have also burned, uh, we will also burn 100% hydrogen. We have also already tested our engines with blends up to 60% hydrogen and 40% natural gas successfully. And we expect first ammonia engine uh, to be ready by 2023 and first hydrogen engine to be ready by 2025 respectively. So before I go to another slide, I'll just play a, a small video I hope you can see the visuals as well. If not, then I think the, the message what you, you will hear, I think you can, you can very well visualize it. So here you go. Everybody talks about decarbonization and rightly so, but they also say that times are uncertain. In Vatsile, we see it a bit differently. Certainties do exist, and we are prepared to advise our key stakeholders on the best way forward for them. One reason why we are able to do so is our track record in innovation. From LNG to methanol, we have a history of delivering industry firsts. And in 2021, we will have an engine running on ammonia. At Wärtsilat, we believe that fuel flexibility will be key to decarbonizing maritime. At this moment, final preparations are made before we start running the engine beside me on a fuel mix containing ammonia. Together with our partners, Repsol, Knudsen OAS, Equinor, and Sustainable Energy Catapult, we are conducting the world's first full-scale development and test program for an ammonia-driven combustion engine. Next door, right here in Vasa, we are preparing to test another very promising green fuel, hydrogen. This way, we are making sure that alternative fuel technologies are ready for our customers well in advance of the markets and infrastructure required. This summer, another test engine will be moved from Vasa to Stolt for an extensive test period. Here we will continue to introduce more and more ammonia into the fuel mix. The combustion engines offers enormous potential for rapid carbon emission reduction. Fuel flexible engine technology provides an upgrade path for existing and new vessels, from transition fuels to green fuels. This R&D project can bring carbon-free energy production to shipping in a matter of just three to four years. Decarbonization of the maritime sector requires cross-collaboration among industry players with complementary competence. The SEEDS initiative is a true example of such collaboration where we look at the complete ecosystem of infrastructure and clean energy supply to the offshore and maritime sector. For GRIG, being part of SEEDS has demonstrated the power of working decarbonization strategies jointly with other industry players. Investing in alternative fuels is a short-term decision with a long-term benefits. It can drastically reduce the emission already today while also providing a head start towards complete decarbonization. Since 2019, the SEED concept has expanded into several concrete work streams, including Grig Edge and Watzlatt's program to launch the world's first green ammonia fuel tanker coming out in 2024. 
The MS Green Ammonia will be utilized for transportation of green ammonia from a production plant in Berlevog in the north of Norway to various locations and end users along the Norwegian coast. The action is on. Thank you for listening. Uh, okay, just to just to uh, give you an idea, if you haven't seen the visuals, uh, the gentleman opening giving the opening statement is our CEO, Mr. Hakan Agneval. Uh, and whatever you may have heard uh, in this in this particular audio or video, uh, it has everything what I have actually listed down on this slide. So we are going full steam ahead with preparing solutions for decarbonization. Moving on to another slide. Sorry. Yeah, so when we talk about decarbonization, obviously we talk about fuels, uh, fuels such as biofuels and hydrogen-based fuels, uh, which are needed to decarbonize the shipping industry. But obviously, you know, everything comes with, with pros as well as cons. When we talk about alternate fuels, then the concern is fuel availability due to the local regulation and fee stock, production capacities and existing infrastructure. Increased CAPEX and OPEX because these uh, carbon neutral fuels typically require existing equipments to be replaced and likely to to have different technology and, and also more expensive than fossil fuels at, at least initially. Impact on vessel, vessel structure, uh, many carbon neutral fuels will have lower volumetric energy density compared to HFO and LNG and require larger tanks to maintain vessel endurance. For example, hydrogen. Increase complexity, uh, managing some cryogenic or toxic fuels will require more complex solutions to comply with rules and regulations such as ammonia. Ship shipyard capacity, there is a mismatch between the number of shipyards capable of handling and fuel con conversion work and the size of the international commercial fleet. Then Watsila's technology, uh, uh, what will be the what will be the decarbonization key key drivers in coming years and what are we de developing to align ourselves with the industry and and the requirements of the industry so use of zero carbon fuels use of low carbon fuels use less fuel uh, so if you see the the the, the bottom uh, section of this uh, chart when we, when we say use zero carbon fuel, then we need to use green fuels and we also need to have fuel flexibility. So green fuels we have, uh, we need to have development of engine technology, we need to have fuel gas supply system in place, retrofit upgrades so that the engine can take the, the alternate fuels. Fuel flexibility, uh, dual fuel engines are the most flexible technology available today. They provide an upgrade uh, path for existing fleet and new assets. So these two boxes gives you, I mean, goes to zero carbon fuel and then eventually decarbonization key driver. Again, with use of low carbon fuel, you need to have obviously fuel flexibility and also you need to have product and system performance, uh, such as development of advanced technologies energy saving solutions for products and systems. Then when we talk about using less fuel, then obviously we need product and system performance. We need hybridization. We need batteries uh, uh, also uh, to be included in the concept when it comes to main propulsion, main propulsion train. Then digitalization, improving the efficiency during operations, uh, monitoring the equipment, condition-based maintenance, fast issue resolutions. So these are the, the key drivers in come. These will be the key drivers in coming years.
So the development of engine technology is ongoing as you have seen in the earlier slide. So the time schedule, everyone would be curious to know when these engines are coming. So the time schedule and cost impacts for engine, engine performance are as below. CH4, LNG, bio or synthetic uh, methane, it con contains 99% of methane. And this is already ongoing. This technology is already verified back in 2003. Then coming to methanol could be a dark horse of the, the alternate fuel. Uh, interestingly, we have converted one vessel in Europe the name of the vessel is Stena Germanica, owned by Stena Lines. We have done the uh, conversion on ZA40 engine, four-stroke engine, and the, the ship is running fine without any issues. The next step is to industrialize this technology on the relevant portfolio engines according to market needs. So this is also going to uh, pick speed in time to come when it comes to retrofitting the existing engines to run on methanol. Then ammonia, as you may have heard and seen uh, in the earlier slide, we have already technologies that are capable, capable of using ammonia. We have used the mixture, uh, a, a, a fuel mix with ammonia. Uh, the, it will be verified. We are expecting the engine to be ready in 2023 on 100% 100, 100 ammonia. Uh, and then moving on to hydrogen, we are expecting first hydrogen engine in 2025. So our, our gas engines have already taken up the blend uh, uh, with, with LNG. So 20% hydrogen and 80% uh, LNG. So when, when we talk about immediate reduction, you know, so I think we already have technology in, in present times where we can, we can reduce the uh, uh, greenhouse gas. And that, that is by the virtue of, if we are having diesel engine, then there is an upgrade, there is a potential to upgrade the fuel injection system, convert it to DF, spark ignited or LNG. Then we already have a DF dual fuel engine in our portfolio, which can be straight away uh, implemented on, on the new vessels, uh, which, which, which comes with improved efficiency. Uh, the, 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 the dual fuel engines, our dual fuel engine, there, are, there is a minimum reduced methane slip. So we already have technology to actually take care of the emissions uh, in present times. Then now this, this particular matrix, what you see is on the left-hand side, this column we have engine type running on diesel, dual fuel, spark igniting, then gas diesel and liquid gas. Now diesel engine can obviously take diesel. It can take FAME HVO, FAME fatty acid, methyl esters, plant derived, basically animal derived and plant derived. Then it can take ammonia, which is, which is under development as you may have seen in the earlier slide. Methanol is already done on diesel engine in 2015, but the inter industrialization is required. Dual fuel engine, you will see more black dots here and you can very well understand the vers vers how versatile this engine is. Spark ignited, it can run, it can take LPG, it can take LNG, it can take biomethane, hydrogen, ammonia, and hydrogen and ammonia are, are still in process, and it can also take synthetic methane. Gas diesel, diesel, LPG, LNG, uh, FAME, HVO, and biomethane. Others, we have tested methanol. Again, development is needed on these engine types, but ammonia is uh, is under development and it can also take uh, synthetic methane. Last but not the least, liquid gas engine. This is only for specific, special application basically and it is limited to the land-based power plants. It can take LPG, uh, MGO is for the pilot fuel. It can take 
LPG and it can take animal derived uh, fuels. Now talking about the storage and supply systems for most future fuels. Now we have, as you may have seen in the earlier slides, two types of LNG packs for liquefied natural gas basically. One is double walled stainless steel vacuum insulation. Another one is LNG pack for, for uh, a single wall for LNG, which is polyurethane insulation. So this can take LPG, LNG, biomethane. Uh, however, the S2 pack, hydrogen pack, and ammonia pack is still under development. For hydrogen, we need minor development. However, for ammonia, we still need to develop because there's a lot of safety aspect uh, associated with it. The dual fuel engines is an excellent fuel flexible choice for the future. You can see the Venn diagram here and DF engine perfectly fits when it comes to fuel flexibility. It can run on diesel and auto cycle, three separate fuel injection system, liquid and gaseous fuels. The latest reference in Australia for DF engine is Our dual fuel engines have been chosen for new spirits, new spirit of Tasmania, which are being built in uh, Roma marine constructions in Finland. And then also we have uh, our dual fuel engines will, uh, will go on new sea road Roro vessel, which is being built in Germany. So when we talk about What's the last, uh, when we talk about decarbonization, you know, it it is it is near to impossible that you know it is if we can reduce emissions only by one means. There are various other solutions and concepts which are required to be developed to support the journey of decarbonization. Mainly, energy saving devices, engine power limitation for both two stroke and four stroke fuel conver conversions, batteries, hybrid, and show connection. Taking a deep dive now, because this section, if you may recall in under the prop propulsion slide, this was one section of our propulsion offering. Why I thought of showing you in this section, because these are directly associated with uh, decarbonization. Now, to meet the requirements for 2030 and beyond, uh, we have proactively developed some in-house solutions. And we have also partnered with few other companies uh, to develop uh, uh, some tailor-made solutions uh, for the vessel. Now, to start with, first one is air lubrication system. Air lubrication system is basically uh, as, as you can see, you know, we, we have micro bubbles forming a carpet on the full flat bottom of the vessel's hull. The system can reduce the fuel consumption and associated greenhouse gases by up to 10%. Now, how it operates? Basically, it has the air release unit, which is uh, the air is supplied by the compressor. Uh, and the, the micro bubbles are the size of one to three mm in diameter. So this is basically uh, applicable for all sea condition. It, it is not weather dependent at all. And it is approved by majority of the uh, classification, all the classification societies. Uh, and the key benefits are it gains operational flexibilities Flexibility by trading fuel savings for increased vessel speed as needed, improves EEDI, and also supports with e -E EXI for existing vessels. So the, the, the this particular solution is we have actually partnered with a company called Silver Stream, which is based out of UK. So yeah, this is this is the product. Uh, of, of our part partnership with them. 
Now, what, what, what does the system comprise of? As I mentioned, it has air release units. It has compressor. Uh, it's a low pressure oil-free compressor connected to the ARU air release unit. Then we have piping and valves. We have control and automation system. And then this entire control and automation system is actually interfaced with vessels automation system. Then we have gate rudder. Gate rudder reduces, as you can see the picture, it reduces vessels fuel consumption by replacing the drag uh, of a traditional rudder system with a thrust and generating arrangement. You can see from the design. Placing the high lift rudder foils on either side of the propeller enables turning at higher speed, faster course changes, and quick crash stops. Again, Watsila has developed this system in partnership with Kuribayashi Steamship Company, which is a Japanese company. The key benefit is it reduces fuel consumption by 5% or more, depending on the design, improves maneuverability, and the ability to maintain a set course. It, it also improves the noise and vibration, enhance crash stop performance, as mentioned earlier, and increased cargo capacity by placing machinery further aft. So traditional, it, we, we can do away with the traditional, uh, that rudder, rudder section, basically. Then we have Energoprofin. Energoprofin is a very, very simple solution, uh, which has a payback time of less than a year. Now this Energoprofin basically has a small baby propeller sitting in front of the propeller. Having the same profile, it reduces the vortex, reduces the, the, uh, the losses, uh, and it also gives you the average fuel saving of 2% with a payback time of less than one year. Again, you know, to, to design this propeller, uh, we just need the existing uh, propeller profile. It doesn't matter whether it is Watsila supplied or non Watsila uh, propeller. We can develop this propeller uh, cap fin for any, any make. Now, another one is Energo Flow. Uh, Watsila, uh, it's, a, it's an innovative and cost effective solution. Uh, Watsila Energo Flow creates, as can be seen, uh, an optimal inflow for the propeller by guiding pre swirl rotor that increases the vessel efficiency by up to 10% without increasing the maintenance needs. So what does this, this, this fin do basically? So this is welded onto the vessel hull uh, in front just before the entry and it creates optimal inflow for the propeller by guiding one side of the stern flow in the opposite direction to the propeller rotation generating a pre swirl So this solution consists of multiple curved fins and a ring attached to ship's hull uh, to prevent the power, uh, to prevent the power losses that typically occur in a propeller's slipstream. So it's not necessarily, it will be two or three fins. It all depends on the design. When you, when we get the, the details of the vessel, we'll get, get the details of the, the hull, uh, uh, we do a CFD and then come out with the uh, the design. So obviously it is done in the dry dock. The fuel efficiency can go up to 10%. Also reduces NOx and uh, CO2. Then we have Energo, Pro, uh, Energo Pack, which is the, uh, the assembly of a rudder with the propeller. And uh, Energo Pack basically is an, is an optimized uh, propulsion and ma maneuvering solution for coastal and seagoing vessels. Its key objective is to reduce a vessel's fuel consumption and CO2 emissions through integrating the propeller and rudder design, as can be seen from the picture. Then we have uh, high performance nozzles. High performance nozzles, sorry. High performance nozzles uh, basically. Uh, 
improves the propulsion efficiency, resulting in increased thrust. So again, direct impact on uh, fuel savings and it performs significantly better than the industry standard nozzle types. Then we have uh, rotor sails. Rotor sails, interesting technology, basically. Uh, and uh, again, we have partnered with a company called Enimoy. Uh, this is again a UK based company. Here we install rotors a cylindrical uh, uh, structures on the deck of the vessel uh, in line from forward to aft. And what happens is these rotors, they basically, they turn. And due to Magnus effect, when they turn, there is a difference between the pressure uh, from, uh, from the front and, and, and at the back. And that difference in pressure creates a thrust. So this solution itself can cut down the fuel consumption up to 30%. And yeah, it's becoming quite popular. And uh, yeah, I mean, when we talk about big figures, you know, for EXI, EDI, EDI NCII, I think this is the best technology we can, we can, uh, we can install on the vessel. Last but not the least, uh, Opti Design. Opti Design is basically, uh, you know, to achieve a perfect match between the propeller engine and the hull. The we have we have sophisticated softwares where we collect the data of the vessel, the the hull design, and all the parameters of, from the engine, and then we redo everything and then redesign everything to optimize. Uh, the, the vessel performance. Again, it reduces fuel consumption and improves uh, the overall uh, design uh, index of the vessel. And uh, yeah, it's, it's again, you know, in-depth in depth, uh, study of, of the vessel design. So that's, that's about uh, the energy saving technologies. Now, Jumping to an again interesting concepts, you know, uh, solutions for for decarbonization. Now these are some concepts which we have prepared for various vessel types. Now this first one, what you see is a Roro, which is diesel electric, has PTO, PTI, and hybrid. Now you can see two main engines, three generators pumping, producing electricity, giving to this switchboard. And then we have frequency converters. We have battery energy storage system as well. Now this, this particular solution uh, has shaft generator, PTO, PTI, and transformers, includes 5,000 kilowatt hour energy storage system which enables zero, zero emissions operation while in port to meet RENA green plus notation and delivers fuel saving. So practically when the vessel is maneuvering in the port, the batteries can straight away take over. So this was developed for Roro. And then moving on to another ferry uh, with zero emissions. Now we have two gensets, DC bus, again, two batteries. And it's a double-ended ferry. You can see steerable thrusters on the forward and the aft as well. And this battery solution enables ferry operation using all electric propulsion solution with show charging. It also has show connection, which offers, again, zero emission transportation and faster response time to the thrusters. Then we have another ferry diesel electric and hybrid uh, now we have gen sets here four gen sets two batteries a show connection again with two thrusters uh, double ended and uh, yeah the flexible hybrid, uh, hybrid solution allows the vessel to operate the engines at their optimal load 
by providing peak shaving, which removes variable loads and also acts as, as spinning reserve. Straight, straight away, you reduce fuel consumption and associated emissions. And also we can uh, prolong the uh, engine maintenance intervals. Then we have a cruise vessel with uh, fuel cell diesel electric propulsion. Now we have two gensets here, two gensets here. We have switchboard and then we have fuel cells here in place of batteries. CPPs are directly driven by e-motor. So again, full, fully electric operation for zero emissions. Again, another interesting one. Uh, this is a bulk carrier with hybrid propulsion with PTO, PTI and show connection. Now, when it comes, when bulk carrier uh, type of vessel, you know, it comes to our mind, you know, the standard, uh, a traditional setup is two stroke engine and a low speed propeller. But in cooperation with RENA, mind you, RENA here is uh, the Italian class, Registro Italiano Neval, we have developed a four-stroke solution for the bulk carrier. Now here we have a small engine, four-stroke 8L20 engine, depends on the output. Gearbox driving a CPP. We have a sharp generator, PTO, PTI. And then we also have a show connection. And then we have a tunnel thruster, which is fully electrically driven. Now, compared to the traditional uh, setup on the bulk carrier, this reduces the footprint dramatically. It reduces the, the capex of the equipment straight away. It, it enhances the efficiency of the vessel. Of course, it, it also, uh, you can also include fuel efficiency straight away. And adding this battery, will also will, will handle the variable load when sailing, allowing main engine to work on a stable load. So this also meets port regulation where reduced emissions are required. A very interesting and it's, it's really becoming popular these days. Now the tug, the hybrid tug, tug operation is ideally suited based, you know, to a hybrid configuration. Now you see there are two gensets. We have DC bus, we have two batteries here. And the thrusters and the transverse thruster is completely you know, electrically driven. So hybrid system allows tug to run fully electrical in low load conditions and in and out of harbor. And when weighting and power boost is required, hybrid can also allow smokeless task start. So, I mean, we all know that tug operations are, are really challenging, and there are so much of there is so much of variation of load. So, uh, respective energy source can step in depending on the uh, application of the tug. Fishing vessel again a hybrid concept. We have a main engine. Then we have genset, switchboard, typical a setup of frequency converter. Then the thrusters are driven by, these are transverse thrusters, fully electrically driven. This also has PTO and PTI. And again, uh, for variable loads, the hybrid system allows the main engine to run at optimal load. And the total installed power can, re can reduce where you can also save a lot of fuel. Battery and auxiliary engines supply additional power pro for propulsion boost in harsh weather and offer peak shaving. Now, this is another interesting solution which Watsila has developed, uh, Watsila Show Connection. Now, this is also uh, becoming increasingly popular. We, we already have these regulations in uh, California where any vessel which is docked should uh, shut down their auxiliaries. 
Now for this, we have uh, a containerized solution. Uh, we call it Watsila Samcon. Uh, so this, this, this features uh, up to 7.2 mega volt ampere transferable power at 6,600 volt at 60 Hertz. Usable on port and starboard, can installed anywhere. <clears throat> Container, including the container, which is including CSC certificate, which is uh, Convention for Safe Container, comes with the certificate designed according to IEC 8005-1, International Electrotechnical Commission, IEC, it stands for that. Safe operation area, electrical, electric cable reel drive, including tension control, and then uh, shore interface design for ports of West Coast, uh, California. It can be designed based on specific port. Maintenance friendly technology. So what does it consist? It consists of a real, real control box, monitoring and control cabinet, medium voltage switchboard, transformer, second reel for connection to ship. So this is also expected to become or adopted by more and more ports in time to come. So I'm not sure what uh, initiative uh, ports in Australia are taking and what what is the what is the outlook, but sooner or later this will this will come in force. Now, what what are the takeaways? when we look at the whole decarbonization uh, uh, journey and you know uh, whatever efforts different makers, different people are putting, there is no single future fuel. We all know that somebody, someone is betting on hydrogen, somebody is betting on ammonia, somebody is betting on methanol, but there will be whole variety mix of fuels in use. We don't think that LNG is going to disappear just uh, with the blink of an eye. Investing in fuel flexible and combustion engine will mitigate compliance and business risks introduced by future fuels. Dual fuel is the best option. Go for a technology which is the best today in the present times, which will offer a, a, a great fuel flexibility in time to come. Watsila will continue to be a supplier of complete system and energy saving solution, regardless of the fuel. As I mentioned, it's not, it's not only fuel, there are energy saving devices. There are different concepts, hybrid electrification, uh, the ba batteries and, you know, I mean, it, it can be endless. It's not limited to that. Continuously, we are striving to develop new, new things, new concepts. So when it comes to engine, Watsila DF engine is an excellent choice for introducing future fuels. This is a major part of what we can offer. Whatever you have seen, it is a major part, but there are more things that can be offered even if they are not mentioned in this presentation. There are also a lot of development projects ongoing to increase our offerings, which will you have to be, you have to stay tuned for for the for the future offerings and the innovations which will come in due course customers most probably need to take step by step approach baby steps to different to do different kinds of upgrades over the coming years to comply with CII and EXI 